Olá, Ana Vieira. Uh, so, I've been interested in the study of how we behave in general, and a lot of our intelligent behavior takes into account what we do in the past. So, we need memory to have decisions that are based on our past. And to me, it became fascinating to think how everything that we are is based not only on our genes and our um, constitution that comes from nature, but also what we experience. And that is some form of general memory. And so very early on, I would say from when I was a teenager, it started to fascinate me how we can store information and then use it in a new context. And maybe also because I used to have a very good photographic memory when I was a kid, uh, I became fascinated how can this happen. Olá, Ana Vicente. This is a very interesting question. So many people are scared of the fact that now we have so much online that is far beyond what we think is our memory capabilities. I mean, in 20 years, there will be more information online than or stored somewhere in computers and in the, in the net than we could ever conceive of storing in individual brains, obviously, already today. So the question is how this affects our capacity. It's hard to predict the future, but already now we start to see in the old days, you go to a library and you have to store all the information you read in that book because you don't have access to it immediately. Now we start having a different type of memory. There are things that we memorize because we like, you know, certain concepts. There are things we don't memorize exactly everything, but we know where the information is. So we memorize the index you know, like the big Wikipedia of the world, we don't think we need at that moment that we're reading it in the web to store everything forever. We assume this is our expanded memory and we just need to have the right indices. So we're focused on getting the concepts right and the structure of the knowledge right, but it is very interesting because somehow we now can have much more access to memory we're indexing to the world, right? So a very knowledgeable person is a person that knows the right concepts and knows where the information is, rather than have it in all stored. So this means our brain can have memory inside and memory dispersed throughout the world. Olá, Carolina and Bina. So a lot of people like you wonder, how can I do things to improve my memory or my ability to store things? It's a very interesting question. We see nowadays tons of ways being advertised, books, how to improve your memory, how to not age. There's a lot of things, games online, we don't know everything that works. Some of the things that we discuss nowadays may be really myths, but we know a few things that work. So we know one very important thing for memory, and it seems to be quite uncontroversial, is sleep. So to sleep well. So what you can do is think for your brain to work well, you need to sleep. You need to have quality sleep. REM sleep. Memory consolidation and problem solving is much better with sleep. So a lot of times what we do with our brain when we go into important events like one exam is absolutely counterintuitive in relation to our knowledge. The other thing that's quite uncontroversial is space training. So we tend to try to condense a lot of moments of acquiring memory it's better to acquire a beat, pause, rehearse again, pause. So instead of the very intense massif massification, to have spacing. 
One thing that starts to become more obvious, uh, but it's still uh, in the study, is the effect of nutrition and exercise. So likely this will play a very important role in the long-term ability of our brains to store uh, memories. So many people think if our brain neurons are dying every day, do they have possibility of regenerating? So the bad news is no. If a neuron dies, typically in uh, species like ours, it, it is not born again as a neuron. The good news is it seems that we have stem cells, cells with capability of producing new neurons still as adults. So although a particular neuron can only regenerate parts of it, and in our uh, brains it's a bit limited, and if the neuron dies, uh, it can only be regenerated again from these stem cells, the good news is these stem cells exist still in the adult brain, and hopefully we can um, find ways of potentiating their differentiation into neurons, into disorders in which there has been degeneration of the existing neurons. Hi, Michael or Michael. Uh, so, a lot of times we think, I cannot remember important things and uh, I um, quite often remember things that I shouldn't, right? So this is very interesting, right? What is important and what is not important? If you retain things, it's because somehow for your brain it was important. Some things are important for the world externally, but they're not things you care about night and day. So imagine it's very important, my appointment at the dentist, but for me, I actually rather forget it. But other things, for example, that are not important, like what's the injury status of a player in the B team of my favorite team, I shouldn't know this information. But somehow, even if it goes on TV, I memorize it because it's something I emotionally relate to. Now, drugs and alcohol actually modulate this a lot. Sometimes, um, taking certain drugs can uh, impair memory retention. Other drugs actually enhance memory retention, but it's always dangerous, right? Because if you're enhancing memory retention overall, you're actually clumping your brain with a lot of things. So if you remember too many things, you're kind of frozen. Imagine you remember with detail every unimportant thing for you emotionally, because you took some drug to help you memorize for an exam, it can be quite impairing rather than relieving. Really